Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just doing a bit of a follow-up on the Vitus Razor VR road bike that you may have seen in another video when I've done an unboxing on it. So this is just a follow-up video on that to show you what I've done to it since purchase of that bike. So I'll go ahead and we'll get into it. Right, so first job is I'm going to be taking out the Sora chain set on the front here. I'm going to be swapping it the, uh, the bottom bracket out for a Dura Race one, so we'll get rid of that Sora one out of there. Right, so we just get this bottom bracket out, see I've already undone it. So just carry on and do it by hand to get this out. So what you have to do on these, before they, they'll come out because the lip on the opposite side, on the drive side there, is you have to get a screwdriver and just undo your uh, screw that's going up through your bottom bracket cable guide there because as you pull this out it won't come out so I'll just show you pull that out and it's stuck in there plastic in the middle is holding it you just undo that screw under here a few turns I can get onto it for you just slacken this off slacken that screw off under there and it'll come out then just like that Right, so here we have the bottom bracket that came out. This is a uh, Shimano BB RS500 bottom bracket that came with the uh, Sora 9 speed. So I'll go ahead and pop that on. 92 grams for that. So we'll grab the bracket I'm going to put in, which is a Shimano. Dura Ace 9100 bottom bracket 64 grams for the uh, 9100 so we'll go ahead we'll get this uh, put back in the frame right so if you're not familiar with this then you've got the 9100 well, I'm just going to install now the one I removed happened to be the uh, BBRS500 bottom bracket that I've got there. That's the tool there for removing those. As you can see, like so. Now, being as 9100, as you can see, that won't fit in there because the cups on these at the ends are much larger than these. As you can see, that one just falls straight in there. So the tool is actually different for between the two, even though it looks the same design, Holotech 2 design, it's actually a different size on the Dura Race. Right, so there were the uh, cranks back in there. So just go ahead, finish tightening up the bolts there and uh, take it from there. Right, so. As you see, I've got the wheels out, so go ahead and change the uh, nine speed cassette there and put it on a different wheel. So we go ahead, I'll take that off, put it on a different set of wheels. I'll weigh those wheels as they are, see what they come out at as they come off the bike without the cassette on there, just a direct comparison. Right, so there we have the uh, nine speed uh, 1128 cassette off of there, off the wheel. Now, what I'll do, I'll go ahead. As you can see, this is the wheel that comes with the bike. So I'll go ahead, I'll pop this on the scale with the uh, Vittoria tyres that came on there and the tubes and everything as they were. It's just for a comparison. So we have it there, 1,789 grams, as you can see. Right, so we have the wheel I'm replacing it with. This has got a Continental Grand Prix four season, 25 mil tire on it, DT Swiss rim. Okay, I'll get this balanced on there. There you go. 1,175 grams for that one. 
Right, so here we have the uh, front wheel standard that come off the bike, as you can see. The weight on that is 1,480, sorry, 1,492 grams for that one. So I'll go ahead and we'll try the other one, see what that weighs. Right, so here we've got the DT Swiss wheel, as you can see. Weight on that's 1,008 grams, you can see there. For the DT Swiss with a Continental tyre on it. So that's the difference. So I'll go ahead, we'll get that fitted in there. Right, so that's the uh, wheels and tyres there, weighed for you. Now, the difference between the stock ones with the tyres on, the Vittoria tyres, and the DT Swiss with the Continental tyres on, like I showed, the difference, the total weight saving of those, front and rear, was 1,098 grams. So nearly 1.1 kilograms. So that's a massive saving just on swapping your wheels and tyres. So I'll transform the bike on the road. Um, it's like go and get your scales and put put one nearly 1.1 kilograms on the scales of weight, say, and see what that actually feels like in your hands. And that was just saving just from the wheels, so and the tyres. Right. So here's how the bike looks now. I say I've been riding it for like three weeks now. So. What we've got is DT Swiss wheels like I showed on it, obviously we're not a standard, I've got mud guards on it now, full set, because that's why it come that's why I bought it, because you can put a full set of mud guards on it properly. Um, and it comes with the actual lugs to fit mud guards. Um, so yeah, we've got guards on it there. I'll say what I've done is I changed the bottom bracket for a 9100 Euro race. I've changed the seat posts, carbon seat post, bars and stem I've changed because when it comes standard they got the wrong um, length stem and the wrong width bars for me so that's personal preference um, you change them on a lot of bikes if they're not right so it's just things to change it to make it fit you properly um, so that's all I've done to it and other than that, it's standard. Still got a Sora group cell on it. Still got 1128 cassette, 5034 Sora R3000 on there. Brakes, see how they were. All I've done is change the pads once, so I've worn the pads out already on them. So they've had a set of pads on it. Um, but other than that, it's how it come. I've just put a bottle cage on it, um, and it's just a winter, winter hack around bike. That's why I bought it in the first place. Right guys, so that's how the uh, bike's turned out now, anyway, so I say I've had it, I've been riding it for just over three weeks now, um, and I can say that as it is there, as it stands, it will always average between 20 and 21 miles an hour, say over 40 miles, no problem at all. Um, I'll say the reason behind buying it is because it's just a winter bike, um, because for the money, 400 odd pounds for the bike initial purchase. I had the parts anyway that I put on it and all I've done is things that, I mean bars, you would end up changing them. You could end up changing them anyway because a lot of people have their favorite uh, type of handle bars and the width could be wrong on the ones that's fitted to it anyway. And that's just how they come. So, and your stem length as well. So that's things that you would change. You could change yourself anyway because you, just to get it comfortable. Um, Obviously I put a carbon seat post on it, which I already had anyway, and the wheels already had those anyway. So I would have swapped them out. Um, but the thing is, with it, the components, being as it's a Sora R3000, the components are a lot cheaper. So in the depths of winter, when you're riding every day, and the roads are in a real bad state, I mean the roads are terrible at the moment, poles, just mud everywhere, they're just terrible. So it's cheaper to wear out a group set like an R3000 it's so much cheaper to replace the chain, the chain rings, the cassette, even the jockey wheels are so much cheaper compared to 11 speed Shimano even a 105 so it's just easier to wear those out and replace them you keep replacing chains, they're cheaper they're a lot cheaper to replace so you can, you can afford to replace a couple of chains and it's not an issue whereas if you keep on replacing say I don't know, R7000, R8000 chains, 
they become expensive and the cassettes are expensive as well so for the winter use it's just not worth ruining um, 11 speed for that purpose you know in the winter anyway I mean it's the conditions you're not going as quick anyway in the winter because the conditions I mean it's dry but it could be icy it's wet so it's slippery under the trees it's damp I so say if you come off being as aluminium bike if you come off it it's not a problem in the winter whereas if you come off a nice carbon bike you'll be gutted if you, especially if you've broken it um, or even if you scratched it up then you've just ruined a nice real nice bike so it costs about two thousand pounds or something you've just ruined it and the thing is with that bike being as it's a nine speed that's irrelevant i mean the frame the on on any bike models it's always the same the frames at the lower end say if it's a 105 group set the frame is identical you're just paying for the group set upgrade nine times out of ten so that's why one with the dura race on it's going to bound to be more expensive but the frame itself is actually the same exactly the same frame so say that bike the Vitus VR for instance I mean it's like 400 say 479 pounds all in the things I've done to it it wouldn't matter it, the group set's perfectly adequate anyway I mean I could swap the whole group set if I wanted to and upgrade it straight to 11 speed but it's just no point like I said for the winter but the actual bike the frame itself if you bought one with 10 speed on it the frame is exactly the same and, and so will the seat post be the same so will the bars be the same, so will the stem be the same you're only paying for the upgrading in group set, the wheels are probably exactly the same so you're better off just buying one for £400 and then the money, even if you bought a £1000 bike the, the wheels that come on a £1000 bike won't be that good anyway so you're better off just buying one for £400 and then the money you've got left over between to get from 450 to say 1100 you got plenty of scope there to find yourself an almost brand new set or set you know a lightly used set of real good quality aluminium wheels and buy those and then you, you can buy a few little upgrades to it but just keep the group set as it is in the winter use you've got a perfectly good winter or all round or all year bike even for a lot less money and it would in it would still keep up with a bike it's got a 105 R7000 group set 11 speed it doesn't matter it won't make any difference so it's just like it's like group set envy that's what they call it it's, you'd be embarrassed to go because it's got sore on it I mean it makes no difference in the, the day like I said it can average that bike averages 21 miles an hour no problem over 40 miles so you know what more do you need really you know, and that's in the depths of winter as well so um yeah it's a perfectly adequate bike it rides it handles nice it rides well i mean it is slightly heavier on the climbs but in the winter it's not a problem if you're training then what does it matter about it's slightly heavier just putting in more effort it's more training really um and the thing is if you've got a summer bike it's that carbon fiber bike for the summer and it weighs a lot less then when you jump off of that thing after the winter jump back on a carbon bike it'll feel like it's literally weighs nothing You'd be, it'd just be flying in comparison so that's another advantage with it but um, yeah it's a perfectly nice bike I enjoy riding it for the money like I said you can't go wrong really for what it is um, I say handles well goes well group set changes gear nice the shifters are slightly heavier in, in feel compared to um, 11 speed even like a 105 they're just slightly heavier but once you got used to it after two or three days you won't even notice it um, unless you jump back on and say a, a bike with 11 speed on it you might notice the shifters feel a bit heavier if you got back on the sore again but other than that I mean it's fitted with 11 28 cassette it's, all, it's um, perfectly adequate for everyday use um, the gear ratios are okay on it obviously you're missing a couple of gears compared to 11 speed so therefore you just notice it initially but after like I said after three or four days you don't even notice it anymore um, so but like I said on the climbs um, obviously it's not going to be it's it's pretty good on the climbs but obviously it's not going to be as light on the climbs and feel acceleration wise as like a seven and a half kilogram bike because being it weighs about all up at the moment with the mud guards on it it's like 9.7 uh, kilograms which isn't exactly really heavy I mean it's not the lightest but for rim brake it's not too bad 
for a winter for a winter bike anyway because as like i said it's still got an aluminium steerer tube even though the car the forks are just carbon bladed forks they're not uh like i say it doesn't have a carbon steerer um you could probably upgrade the fork um with a carbon steer if you if you find one that'll fit to like that lighten it down that's say like quite a few hundred grams just by doing that but yeah all round pleased with it for the winter uh, for the money so if you found the uh, video helpful remember to give it a thumbs up just remember to subscribe to the channel for uh, more cycle related content especially on the maintenance side of things if you um, if you want to, know how to fix anything on your bike easy easy to do so if you want to uh, if you want to find out anything about that just remember to look look up the channel look through some of the videos you might find them helpful so yeah so until the next video ride safe and i'll see you on that one